years discussing, negotiating, lobbying, and pressure, there is now officially a Jewish, Jewish, Jewish state in the area once known as Palestine. The process of statehood began six months ago when the United Nations voted 33 to 13 in favor of a Palestinian partition, with 10 members, including Britons, abstaining. The state of Israel, as of today, May 14, 1948, is now recognized as a nation. The proclamation was made by David Ben-Gurion, head of the Jewish, Jewish Agency. This will come into effect starting at midnight tonight. Here to discuss this with us, all the way from London, is Sir Fakelot, one of the main British backers, backers and supporters of the state. Also present is Professor Stuckupper, an expert in Middle Eastern affairs. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Sir Fakelot, when would you say that the creation of a Jewish state really started to become a viable possibility? Well, that's rather difficult to pinpoint. The Jews have wanted autonomy as well as control of the Holy Land for millennia. According to the Holy Bible and the Torah, God gave them that land, meaning they own it by divine right. Obviously, then, the want to create a nation was there, but the means were noticeably absent. The problem Zionists faced was that the Holy Land was already occupied by Muslims, who some say deserve to stay. If I had to pick a time for when the creation of the state became a realistic possibility, I believe the start could be said to have occurred with the first mass immigration of Jews to the Holy Land in 1882, shortly after the death of Tsar Alexander II. This first Aliyah, composed of Russian Jews, was the initial start of the nation. I would like to gently disagree with Sir Fagelot on this point, if I may. Though 1882 marked the first Aliyah to what is now Israel, as well as the first organized Zionist movement in Russia, the idea of an actual country, rather than residency, was first sparked by the publication of Der Judenstaat by Theodor Herzl in 1896. For those viewers who do not know, this title translates to the Jewish state. If one is simply categorizing by vague happenings, then in my professional opinion, I believe this is the most concrete. However, the true event that made the creation of a Jewish state not only viable, but also probable, was the Balfour Declaration of 1917. A declaration I am quite familiar with, as it, as it was the starting point of my personal involvement with, crea with creating Israel. The letter was between Arthur Balfour and Lord Rothschild. It's a conspiracy! And it was basically a bunch of fancy, high and mighty British formalities that translated to The king kinda look likes the Jews and thinks it'd be cool if they had their own country. Though the declaration was a definitive, definitive start in the right direction, it lacked any real substance. The Arab nations initially accepted the declaration and were willing to share land with people what, who they called racial kin. But in 1920 that fell apart. There was, a, there was a Syrian congressional meeting in Damascus that rejected the drawing of new country lines and called for a united Syria that included Palestine. Interesting. This is where the ancient conflict between the Jews and the Middle Eastern inhabitants started to become a modern issue. Even though the declaration had been rejected by the Arabs, the League of Nations approved it anyway and added on the call for a Jewish agency to be instated. After the Balfour Declaration, and now the British Mandate, around 40,000 Eastern European Jews immigrated to Palestine. These Jews, predominantly trained in the realm of agriculture, turned the desert-like area into a thriving, malaria-reduced, fertile farmland with socialist-oriented organizations. Jews started to arrive in droves from 1924 to 1929, when Poland and Hungary became subject to anti-Semitic movements. It should be mentioned that about a fourth of these immigrants ended up leaving due to the rather harsh economy at the time. Anyway, this large influx of industrious Jews attracted many Arabs, and their population increased as well. These two very different cultures swelled and started coming into violent contact with each other at this time. It was around this time that I got pretty frustrated. The British realized that they had valuable assets in Palestine, and since it was still under control of the Arabs and the Arabs didn't like Jews, they had better suck up to the Arabs. This led to the British white paper restrictions, which severely limited the number of Jews able to enter Palestine. This restriction was, was enacted in 1930, which was fine. But guess who came into power in 1933? Hitler. So now both the United States and Palestine had immigration quotas, trapping Jews in Germany to be massacred by the madman. In a way, then, it could be said that these quotas, which contributed to the deaths of millions, also helped the Jewish people, in a way. Uh, the main push for a Jewish nation began soon after the Holocaust. Well, we're out of time. Bye! It's a baby. One of the knights had a baby.
pregnant night. <laughs> I finished. <laughs>